And we do it with a little device called a mouse. We call it a mouse because it has this little wire that runs back to the computer. And we can make the Macintosh do different things uh, just with the click of the mouse. At Apple Computer's annual meeting, Apple founder and chairman Stephen Jobs unpacked Macintosh. In 1970, in between college years, when I was working at a company to earn money for college, I managed to get the parts given to me to build a computer of my own design. The friend down the block that helped me do this also knew Steve Jobs, and he introduced us. He said, you've got to meet Steve Jobs because he knows this digital electronics. He builds devices with flashing numbers that can count strings on a guitar and what note they're playing and things like that, and he likes to play pranks. I was a very much a fun humorist all my life. And wow, so Steve Jobs came by, and I would have been too shy to go meet him. But he came by, and we started talking, and sure enough, we hit it off. He could describe things that he had done in electronics. I could just de describe myself and my computer interest in designs. And uh, we just became, you know, best friends for a long time. The Apple I is a bad comparison to today's computer, partly because it was um, not designed as a computer. It was taking a little device that was designed to talk to computers by typing on a keyboard and getting your answers back in text over a slow modem. And it was designed to save cost in parts to work very slowly. Now the Apple II is a better example of to compare to today's computer and it was very different. You would turn it on, beep, it would boot up and it would be ready for you to start typing in a computer language. They were not finding files or anything. Files were stored on a cassette tape, um, you, one at a time, every tape was just one little file, one program. It was a very infantile computer. What it did bring to the world was the idea that computers can have color. They can have human appreciated things, color. They can have graphics so they can play like arcade games. They can even have pixels, individual dots on the screen for higher resolution pictures that look more natural. They can have game controls and games are okay to build into computers. The Apple II set a big tone on that world that help be a step towards today's computers. But today's personal computers are based on much deeper thinking. First of all, prices of memory to run today's computers would have made the Apple, if we tried to build that computer back instead of the Apple II, it would have cost like 50,000, 100,000 of today's dollars to buy it. It was unachievable then. But as Moore's law caused the price of silicon chips and especially memory to fall and fall and fall, the computer like, say, the Macintosh became possible. In the meantime, Microsoft came about, and IBM invent, started up with a computer based around Intel chips and Intel microprocessors, and they basically hooked them together in the standard way. They worked very much like the Apple I and the Apple II. They, they incorporated eventually a little graphics, and eventually they got up to the Apple II level in graphics even. But you would type in commands, you would think them out, you would memorize how to use a computer, and you would use it. You had to teach yourself. You had to take a little personal course to even know how to use a computer. Today, computers are almost like telephones. You kind of walk up, turn it on, and you start looking around, and you'll find little clues on the screen that lead you to the actions that make them work. In the time frame of the Apple II being such a wonderful world that had really excited people about how beautiful and colorful and fun computers could be. And then IBM had jumped in with their PC. And they never to this point in time had done quite as good a job. They weren't as well accepted in the schools and the homes, but they had marketing inroads into the enterprise, into the big businesses that all of a sudden could justify a thousand computers at once to purchase unheard of numbers. So we kind of saw them as just marching in and just trying to use their prowess to take over the business. And we were the rebels who had created it all, who were really leading the world. And people were looking to us for leadership. It's almost like today's Apple. And so Steve called me over to the Macintosh building one night and put, said, you gotta watch this commercial. And he put in a tape into a U-Matic machine. And I watched the 1984 commercial where this, this young, colorful, you know, woman is running and she throws an anvil and it hits the screen and on the screen is somebody that sort of reminds you of those big companies there will be no contrary thought we are one people one will one resolve one cause you know they do all the thinking for you and she blew it up and you know it basically it, it meant it symbolized what we were 
You know, we were talking about, you know, we stand for getting rid of the past and you don't have to go down the roads that everybody says you do and there's a new brighter future and we're the leaders in it. That's what it said to me. And I turned to Steve and I said, wow, we're gonna show this on the Super Bowl? And when he said that, no, the board had voted against it. And why, and one of the reasons was money. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put up $400,000 if you'll put up 400,000, that was half and half. And we could show this commercial. It should be shown because this is who we are. And I said that to Steve, I was so naive thinking that's how the world worked and that's how boards worked and <laughs> that it was that simple. It was just a matter of money. But um, eventually, thank God, there were a lot of creative people in our advertising agency that knew how great an ad that was. It won all the awards to this day, the Clio Award for best ad of the year. It's won the, ad of the, the best ad of the millennium. Um, unbelievable science fiction mentality behind it. And the creative people that, that, that produced it did everything they could to make sure that, you know, we still had a chance to show it on the Super Bowl, which we did.